Hi, my name is Jasper. I'm a filmmaker and a travel photographer. I'm so grateful that God has given me now to share with you guys my story. Um, I was only given a few minutes, so I'm not sure if I can um, do the whole thing. But let me just start with a little bit of my history. I guess I was born just like you, maybe many of you, born and raised in a Seventh-day Adventist home. Uh, we were raised as a Christian, but I grew up in a very nominal Seventh-day Adventist family. That means I don't eat pork, I go to church and this day, but I don't really know why. There's no reason behind it. So it's very nominal or cultural. I became a church member because the family demands me to be part of a church. But fast forward, when I was 17 years old, I woke up in the hospital and I found myself having a seizure in the middle of the night. The doctor came and he said, oh, we need to have a MRI scan of your brain. We need to check it out. And they found a tumor on the left side of my brain. Of course, that really has scared me. I'm only 17 during this time. I have so many dreams in life. And can you imagine <laughs> living your life having an alien object in your brain that's not supposed to be there? That was very scary for me. And so fast forward, my, my father came up and he had this amazing idea. He said, Jasper, I think God is calling you to be a pastor. And that for me probably is one of the most absurd idea. I don't want to be a pastor. I think that is a very bad idea. But uh, if you're Filipino or Asian, you probably can relate to this. You have no choice but to follow what your parents tell you to do. And so I was sent to the boarding school, a school called Central Philippine Adventist College. And I, uh, I studied theology there. And by God's grace, I found Jesus in the school. I was not trying to find him at all. He found me. And I could resonate to what Ellen White said in the, the, this book called Ministry of Healing. She said, grace is an attribute given to undeserving human beings. We do not seek for grace, but grace was sent in search for us. And that's my story because I was not trying to find God at all, but he found me instead. And so I, I look back in, into this miracle where God has healed me every six months. We go to the doctor and the doctor would see my tumors getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it was completely gone. It was gone. It was a miracle. I was not a vegetarian during that time. I was not following any of the suggested diet that I need to follow. It was purely a miracle. It was God. He found me. He healed me. And I found my purpose. And from then on, I told myself, I want to full send and I want to do what God wants me to do. I became a pastor in Indonesia. I worked as an evangelist there also. But I also found this love for photography and films. And it's because of my second life, I decided, you know what? I'm going to full send. I'm going to put everything in my backpack, on my bag, put it on two bags and a camera bag and travel the world. And from then on, I started to travel around the world in 50 different countries. And mind you, to give you a little context with a Philippine passport, that's one of the weakest passports in the world. And that also is a miracle. But anyways, I started to travel around the world, seeing all these amazing places. I get to go to Africa. I went to North Korea. I went to China. I went to all these places and do adventures with Jesus, get to do mission work, get to preach around these amazing places. And then the pandemic hit. And we all know this, everything that we love to do has stopped. And now everything that I do has halted. And that really affected my mental health. I struggled. And to put the cherry on top, I went to the US, applied for a visa, and I got denied. <laughs> I was detained. Uh, the, the, the officers asked me, why are you traveling? How can you afford to travel in 50 different countries without any money because I don't have any job? And I was trying to explain to them, but they won't believe me. And they sent me back home to the Philippines and probably one of the most hurtful times in my life. Because here I am, identifying myself as a traveler, has been stopped. And I was stuck at home for three months thinking, what do I do next? I don't know what to do. This door is closed and the pandemic is here. I don't know what to do. So fast forward. God opened some doors and the islands in the Philippines starts a little bit to open up. And a friend of mine called me and I called him. Actually, I called him and said, hey, I have some free time. I want to go to the island. And this friend of mine, he's a helicopter pilot. His name is Daniel Lui. 
a very good friend of mine. Six years ago, I actually went to this island too to help out with films, but I wasn't able to finish his story. So I told him, hey, I promise you I'm coming back uh, to film your story. And it took me six years to come back there, met him and he said, man, I only have a few days, maybe five days. I want to come with you and join you in your trips, maybe take photos and make a film about you. And I remember that moment I sat with him in the helicopter and we went all around the jungles of Palawan, Brooks Point. We visited jungle villages and we've served this group of people, people called the Palawans. And they're Highlanders, they live in the Highlands. And when we were there, we tried to do medical evacs. That's what Daniel would do. He'd rescue people. He'd also bring doctors and he would do medical clinics around the jungles. And one time we went to this small little jungle village and we met a teacher. Her name is Teacher Jillian. And this is where I guess all the story starts, where everything shifted. But Teacher Jillian was adopted by AFM missionaries who were assigned in Palawan. And she was given American citizenship. But instead of going to the U.S. and live there and finding a better, greener pasture than the jungles, she literally decided to stay in the jungles and serve her own people. And so she, she went there, she taught there, and I saw her school. It was just a makeshift school and she has books and she teach people how to read and write, teach people about Jesus. And that one really has inspired me. And then one time I remember asking Teacher Jillian, Teacher Jillian, what do you need in this school? She said, Jasper, if you give me some rice, maybe a sack of rice and some blankets, I'll share it with the community. And so I took my phone. This is what I always do. I create stories. Now to give you a little context, when I was flying around with Daniel, what I was doing is that I would film everything and post stories on my Instagram. And so I made a special appeal. I put Teacher Jillian's story there on my Instagram and I gave them a little appeal, my followers. I said, hey, if you guys are willing to help me buy Teacher Jillian some rice and some blankets. And in 24 hours, my followers responded and they raised $5,000 and that really blew my mind. And I said, man, this is crazy. This is such a powerful tool, social media. And so instead of staying there for five days, I decided to stay there for seven months. <laughs> that five days became seven months living in the jungles, creating stories in my Instagram to help the community through social media. So we went shopping. We brought all these supplies and gave to Teacher Jill in the supplies and to the people. We gave, we bought them bags, we bought kids school supplies, blankets, and it was an amazing sight. Then something dawned on me. These people need more than food, more than blankets. They need something better. And so I was really challenged because some of these kids are struggling with early marriages and this was an intense struggle for me, looking at the community, having all these problems. People who are kids growing up, not knowing how to read and write. And most of them are farmers. So they, every time they go to the town, they get cheated upon because most of them, they don't know how to count and read and write. And so it was a big struggle. There must be something here. I think we should help out build a school. I remember posting this on my Instagram and I told everybody who follows me on Instagram, hey, I have this crazy idea. I don't know if this is possible, but I would love to build a social media funded jungle school. I don't know how will that look like, but I want to build something like this. And so I posted this and in just 24 hours, we reached $10,000. And in a matter of two weeks, we've doubled our goal through social media. And we were able to start building an idea of creating a jungle school. And, and by the way, I want to let you know that this is, was not just my idea. Oh, this guy came and he said, oh, I want to build you guys a school. No, 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 no. The community came and they said, we wanted a school. And that really taught me a lesson because most of us at church, we decide what people need. A friend of mine once told me, he said, hey, in a church, we love to feed people, but we don't really ask them if they're hungry or not. <laughs> and I'm guilty of that because sometimes and most of the times we at church, we decide what people need. Oh, you need a book. We will give you a book. Oh, you need this. We will give you this. Instead of being with the community, we're only in the community or for the community. But God said, no, no, no. You should be with the community. And so I've realized that if you live with the community, it actually teaches you 
to know what they really need. And so I saw this need by living with the community for months. And they told me, hey, we want a school. And so we went forward, started to build a school. And, and this is so difficult because everything needs to be airlifted. And so we fueled the helicopter through social media and we started building the school. And by God's grace, we were able to finish the building in just three months. It's crazy to think that this school was 100% funded by social media. I picked the story to share to you guys because this story was out of a disappointment that I've experienced. And many of you probably have been in that situation too where God closes the door. But I hope this story reminds you that when God closes the door, He opens a bigger gate. And without that disappointment from the U.S., without the pandemic, I would have not experienced building a school that is funded by social media. And so I want to encourage you guys, maybe you're in a state of discouragement or maybe the pandemic has, has immobilized you or you thought that you were imprisoned or bound. But I want to encourage you guys that if you're faithful with what you have, and, and offer yourself to God and His service, I promise you God will give you something bigger than you've ever planned on. Let me close with this thought. Remember that story of Peter? Peter walked in, walking in water with Jesus. Remember that? They were in that the boat and it, there was a storm and, and Jesus was walking in water and, and Peter told Jesus, he said, Jesus, if that's you, allow me to walk in water. And Jesus said, come. Peter went out of the boat it starts walking. It was a miracle. Peter walking on water. And then the Bible said that he lost sight of Jesus. He sank and, and Jesus rescued him. Remember that? He's, he was praying, Lord, save me. And then Jesus saved him. And, and sometimes we use this story as an illustration of what not to do. Or an example, when you lose sight of Jesus, you'll sink. But think about this. If you look at the story, we may laugh at Peter. But Peter is the only one actually who walked in water. The rest of the disciples did not. You know why? Peter was the only one willing to step out of the boat. And I've realized the only way you'll see miracles, the only way to do that is when we allow ourselves to step out of the boat. There is no growth in comfort. So I would encourage you guys, step out of the boat. Try. The Bible said, taste the Lord for He is good. I want to encourage you guys, go out there, do something with what you have. It may be social media, cooking, singing, whatever it is. Step out of your comfort zone and I promise you, God will give you an opportunity to walk on water. Yeah.